All right, here we have some Asian ingredients that we picked up. These ingredients are perfect for making kanji, miso soup, and other Asian dishes like bok choy. There are some bulbs of ginger right here. And that we have some garlic that we're going to make our own fresh ginger garlic paste. I want to talk to you about kelp combo. In Japanese dried kelp is used for making dashi. So here you have this kelp from the sea that's been dried and pressed. First thing you want to do in starting off your recipe is to, I don't like to put these pieces in whole. So normally what I'll do is I will cut these into smaller pieces and put them into uh, at least that amount. This is one whole package. You can see the package there. I'll put that at least into one quart of water, uh, cold water, and let it sit for 30 minutes at room temperature. During that time I will put the pork in the freezer for 30 minutes to chill and to to freeze a little bit because it makes it so much easier to slice it thin, super thin, when it's frozen a little bit as opposed to where fresh like that. The other thing we have here is our bonito flakes. So this type of dashi that I'm going to make for using one cup of rice, jasmine rice, for this kanji, is going to make, this dashi is going to be made awasa dashi, which is a, meaning in Japanese a combination. I'm using Japanese technique with Chinese to make this kanji. So we're going to only use these two ingredients, but after this soaks for 30 minutes, then what you want to do is bring it to a simmer, not a boil, the kelp. Bring it to a simmer, do not let it boil, and then remove the kelp. And you're not going to throw it away, you're going to save it. And at that point, what you're going to do is you're going to then add the bonito flakes to the same broth for about three minutes. Now, unlike when I made kanji the last time where I left the bonito flakes in, as we used the ginger garlic paste and the diced onion. This time, after the bonito flakes are added to that hot stock, that dashi, I'm going to strain them with this fine strainer. And I'm going to strain out all, all the flakes and the end. We're going to just have a nice clear broth. Here we have what's called the country style ribs, uh, and over here is what we have is pork loin. Um, so we're going to use the pork loin to actually, with that marinade, to fry that, and we're going to use the uh, country style rib, the fattier part, in our century egg, 1,000 year old egg. This is what they look like when they're in the package. These are preserved duck, duck eggs. And we're going to use that, and we're going to make the traditional kanji with uh, preserved duck egg and pork. Now, if you look at this duck egg, when they're preserved, what they do is they preserve these with lime and salt and ash. And uh, then they preserve them for several weeks, and they put them in rice husk. And they become this gelled-like type of egg. But when you slice it open, I want to slice it and show you. You can see that the inside of these duck eggs have this, uh, this wonderful color to them that they're preserved all the way through. Okay, so here is our combo our kelp that and I, you know what I'm going to I said I was going to put it in a quart of water I actually put it in three liters of Poland spring water right here 
Uh, why? Because I'm going to make enough dashi to have for also for leftover for miso soup. To that, I'm going to add two packages, roughly around uh, nine grams of bonito flakes to this to this broth to this dashi. All right. So while we're waiting, let's talk about Asian hot pot. Hot pot. It is not pho. When you do hot pot, I brought this hot pot. A, which has two sides. It's two sections on this hot pot, and uh, it was only $23, $22.95 plus tax. And this hot pot, what is hot pot? Hot pot is a communal way of eating different in ingredients, and what you have to do uh, is you're gonna still make a dashi stock, but the first thing you're going to do is most people use oxtails. So they'll take oxtails and um, they will bring them to a, uh, a high simmer and they will let the oxtails cook down for about four hours and that creates the base of the stock. And then what they will do is they'll add the dashi and they'll add chili paste and they'll let that continue to cook until you get this nice red rich umami with tons of glute mates uh, broth but they use a, a combination uh, most Asian people will use a combination of dashi which is uh, uh, combines bonito flakes the uh, skipjack tuna dried smoked uh, tuna flakes as well as the kombu and they will also use shiitake mushrooms dried shiitake mushrooms and dried anchovies to make that broth that they take out the uh the oxtails and they skim that broth and then what they do is they leave the oxtail meat aside to pick that later combine it with the chili paste and um different in, in, ingredients and we're going to talk about hot pot so hot pot then after that broth is all done then the ingredients are leafy uh, vegetables, leafy vegetables to be able to dip into the communal pot with the communal chopsticks. Each person gets their own personal chopsticks. And then there's the communal chopsticks with all the different garnishes. Uh, usually sliced short ribs. Short ribs, you can freeze them a little bit and slice them super thin and layer them and put them on a nice... Uh, uh, Asian earthenware platter uh, around the hot pot in the center of the table uh, as well as uh, chopped scallions um, shiitake fresh shiitake mushrooms um, different Asian squash and then each person takes the communal chopsticks and they dip into the hot broth for one to two minutes depending on the thickness of in the ingredients that they're cooking and then they enjoy that with uh, noodles and rice. Uh, so that's hot pot. It is not your, your, your Asian um, noodle bowl. It is not pho. Uh, it is not kanji. It is its own communal way of enjoying, uh, enjoying different ingredients and meats and vegetables in a communal hot pot. You can do one side with with a uh, regular uh, enriched umami broth and you can do the other side with a spicier broth for people to use the communal chopsticks and dip and cook their different ingredients and then enjoy them with their personal chopsticks. Okay, so at this point, everything that is going to be going into this dashi and to make your kanji needs to be mise en place, everything and it's a place for everything and everything in its place. Here we've already uh, sliced up some scallion. We've got our striped shiitake mushroom already sliced. Here I have, I'm actually going to enhance this dashi. I've got some anchovy here, some dried porcini and some wakami. And I'm gonna put that right in that pot back there. And I'm going to let that cook separate. We're going to strain that off. And that's going to be... Uh, glutamates are going to develop in there. And that's going to be a wonderful 
uh, addition to our dashi here. We've got our jasmine rice soaking. We're going to rinse that off and that's going to uh, be the part of when we start to use some of this dashi stock to make our kanji. This is at the point now where we let the kombu, the kelp, soak for 30 minutes and then we brought it up to a high simmer here uh, in cold water, three liters of cold water. You can see that this is working wonderful back there. This right here, folks, this is white cardamom. White cardamom. So when you, we get the Szechuan peppercorns, you can actually squeeze these with your finger and you can see the cardamom seeds that are in there. We're gonna get our ginger garlic paste. Very easy to scrape off the skin of the ginger using a teaspoon. We're gonna mix that up with the garlic and get our ginger garlic paste. Well, let's get this bonito into our kelp for our dashi. Okay, so there is our kelp. We took that out of the pot and we added our nine grams of bonito flakes. And we're gonna let that simmer for about three minutes. Okay, so I took half of the dashi that I made and I'm reserving half here. And over here we have the anchovy and the shiitake mushroom and the wakame is reduced down wonderfully. Our rice is now rinsed, but I'm gonna add this to this broth here to make miso soup. And you see how the color changed? That's the reason why I did them separate because you can see that the color has changed now more to the color of miso soup. So when I add the white miso to that and then take the mushrooms out and Julia and them slice them um, with the wakame in there, then we will have miso soup. But back to our kanji, we have our bonito that uh, we strained. And you can see that there. We have the kombu, the kelp, and we're gonna reuse that. Believe it or not, you can reuse that and uh, get a lot out of it. So let's add our rice now to this pot and get this out of the way. And we're gonna turn up the heat to a medium high and we're gonna start cooking our jasmine rice for our kanji. All right, we're gonna get our diced white onion sauteed in a wok. That's gonna be added to the kanji while the jasmine rice is cooking. We've uh, made our, we're gonna make our own fresh ginger garlic paste. We're going to take this minced garlic and fresh ginger and we're gonna put that in the pestle and mortar and we're gonna make our own ginger garlic paste. We may not, depending on the yield, we may not use all of that ginger garlic paste in this kanji. All right, so our ginger garlic paste, we're only going to use half of that in the kanji, and then we have our onions already in here, and we're going to use the other half in our miso dashi broth. We'll add the white fermented bean curd paste, the miso to that, when we make the miso soup. But toasting the our fresh made ginger garlic paste brings out all that wonderful flavor and it only needs about a minute and put that into our kanji look at that mm. this step is very important when making kanji we have two chopsticks that we're going to line up on the pot here and um, then we're going to put the lid on and what this does is it keeps, it gives space between the lid and the pot, and it keeps the rice from boiling over, the kanji from boiling over. And I added the uh, ginger garlic paste to our miso dashi broth, and all we have to do is add the miso and get the rest of our century eggs. 
our duck eggs, preserved duck eggs. We're gonna crack the rest of them. They'll all look like that there. You see, it's so much easier to slice the pork with, with this global sashimi knife when the pork is semi-frozen. We're going to then take two eggs, two egg whites, and some cornstarch and some pink Himalaya salt and white pepper and we're going to toss this these slices all up in the bowl they're going to be added to the kanji last for about one minute to cook through this technique is called velveting and makes the meat white and tender all right here is our finished kanji you can see our wonderful pork how nice and white that is and beautiful now there is our century egg our preserved egg add our this is the pork and duck egg kanji all right we'll add some sky into that to give it color And we'll add a little bit of shiitake mushrooms to give that color, and to give it body and more flavor. All right, here is our century egg and a pork kanji. You can see here I've got the century egg in here. The century egg, AKA the thousand year old egg, the millennium egg, or simply the black egg is a preserved egg that is considered a delicacy in China. The preserved egg that's preserved in ash and clay and quick lime and salt and then wrapped in rice husk for three weeks to preserve. The egg comes out in a nice gel and uh, dark color there, as you can see dropping back in. You've got the wonderful pork. In there, here we've got some toasted sesame seeds, some Thai basil, and we've got some scallion and chili and shiitake mushroom and dried nori. And this fury kake, which is a rice seasoning. This goes well since this is a rice porch. And we've got some sashimi togarashi that you can use as a garnish as well as sriracha. And uh, this is well seasoned. In fact, I'm going to make sure that this is well seasoned, that we don't need to add any of that fish sauce to here. Let me move away from the pot to taste this. Mm. Now we're ready to dish it up. That is absolutely delicioso. So, again, Turn your handles, get your kanji into the bowl. We go. Got some scent, got a lot of century egg in that one. Mm, that bowl's got a lot of century egg. And babe can garnish with whatever she would like from our seasonings here. We'll get another bowl going. Get some century egg and some pork in that. And uh, see if there's a little, get a little more of that in there. And there you have it, guys. Folks, men and women. Uh, a little bit of Thai basil to that. You can pick off the leaves and Then add that to your kanji. You can get a little garnish of some scallion on that. Mmm, lots of scallion. And, uh, that looks great. And, babe doesn't like hot, but I'm going to do the hot chili. And I'm going to do a little bit of this on both. It's 
already has the toasted sesame in there. And of course, for color, she doesn't mind sriracha. So how about just a dot, a zigzag. And there you have it. Century egg and pork kanji. Add more garnishes if you like. Maybe a little bit of a little bit of uh, the dried nori. That gives a nice look to the kanji. Our century egg. Look at the century egg right there. You can see it. That's beautiful. And pork kanji.